Hi there, I'm Walt Jaquith, Applications Expert for Imaginet Technologies and Certified Inventor Professional. This video is the first in a series on surface repair tools and techniques. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the basics of repairing imported surface parts and turning them into solids. For my example part, I'm going to be using this wheel hub assembly. This part came to me as part of a step file assembly. Most of the parts were okay, but this one had some errors. Most users have encountered imported parts that come with this translucent orange outline appearance instead of the familiar gray default. It's not uncommon for older parts, particularly ones which were exported using the old IGIS file format. What does it mean and what do we do with it? First, it means that the part has been imported as a surface body instead of a solid. The reason that happened is that there is something wrong with the surface envelope, meaning that the geometry isn't completely enclosed. In other words, there's a hole in it somewhere. It may have been a solid in the software in which it was created, but the export process introduced flaws in the surface geometry. Your first item when confronted with a part like this is to decide whether it's worth fixing. One option is to simply turn off the translucent setting and use it as is. If you prefer the shaded with edges visual style, you'll have to put up with the obnoxious orange edge lines, but other than that it should behave itself as well as any other part. One thing you might want to do is select the composite in the browser and clear the override appearance in the appearance pulldown. Many imported surfaces carry an appearance override left over from the original file. Changing that setting will allow you to control the appearance of the surface the same as any other inventor part. If you need to make changes to the part, it will be much easier if you first convert it into a solid. And that means finding the flaws in the geometry and fixing them. Here's how. As I said earlier, geometry imports as surfaces instead of solids in inventor because that geometry is not fully enclosed by one continuous surface. One possibility for this condition is that the geometry is fully enclosed, but by more than one surface. That's always worth checking first because it's an easy fix. So the first thing to try is to select the stitch command from the surface panel on the 3D model tab. Draw a box around the whole component and try to stitch it. If that works, the part will immediately convert into a solid and you're done. If not, the command will either fail or succeed but still leave you with a surface model. Either way, it means we still have problems that need fixing. If the part's stitched but didn't make a solid, it's best to undo that operation to get back to the original surface body. Then we need to get into the repair environment to do some testing. To get there, I'm going to right click on the composite in the browser and select Repair Bodies. The tools here are similar to the ones in the surface panel, but have some additional capabilities and diagnostic options. Notice that the first tool in the list is the Find Errors tool. This tool can spotlight surfaces which are so flawed that they failed altogether on import. In my experience, that's not a common problem, but I have seen it. It will also find things like overlapping surfaces or edges. It's a good idea to always run this tool first. If it finds anything, you'll need to deal with it before you can move forward. In this case, it finds no errors, indicating that all the existing surfaces are legitimate. We'll need to keep looking to find out why those surfaces can't make a solid. Next, I'm going to select the stitch command. Notice that it has a different dialog box from the regular stitch tool. As before, I'm going to select all the geometry but now I'm going to select Find Remaining Gaps and Free Edges. A part which can make a solid will have no gaps or free edges, so this tool will find our problem areas and show them in red. As I zoom in on the red areas, I can see that there's some extra geometry that doesn't seem to belong. It can be difficult to see what's going on, but what you're looking for are missing surfaces, surfaces broken into too many parts, or surfaces that don't make sense for what the geometry is supposed to be doing. At a minimum, I've got the last two going on here and maybe the missing surfaces as well. It looks like in this case all four of the holes are similar, 
and the problem exists at both ends. Now I know what part of the model I need to fix. Having seen the errors, I know that the stitch command will fail, so I'll cancel out and fix things. Hovering over the surfaces, I can see that the whole chamfer surface somehow got split into two. There was also a second hole surface. There it is. All that needs to get fixed before the part will stitch correctly. The surface repair environment has all kinds of tools, but my favorite one isn't up in the panel at all. I'm going to right click on one of the bad surfaces and select delete. And again, and again. Now I'll select the boundary patch tool and then the two remaining edges. The surface is created between them. Now I can move on to the other side of the hole. I still have two bad surfaces to delete here. I can use the shift select to select them both, delete them, and now I can create that boundary patch as well. Now I need to do the same thing for the remaining three holes. And I'm done. Now I can exit out of the repair environment and go back to the regular stitch command to stitch the surfaces. And it worked. I have a solid body now instead of surfaces. In my experience, many errors found in imported geometry can be repaired using the method I just demonstrated. It's easy, quick, and gives good results in many cases. There are times, however, where simply deleting the bad surface and filling the resulting gap with the boundary patch is not what I'm after. We'll see a specific example of this in the next video. For now, let's take a quick look at some of the other tools in the repair environment. I can use the Extend Faces command to lengthen a face. After lengthening the chamfer face, I can do a boundary trim using the whole edge to trim the surface. The trick here is to remember to pick on the side you want to keep. If both edges extend past each other, I can use the Intersect Faces tool to trim them both at the same time. The Edit Regions tool allows me to select a surface with features and then pick which of those features to keep and which to discard. It's sort of like the boundary patch tool, but doesn't create separate faces for each patch. This would be useful if I wanted to completely eliminate a hole in this flange. I believe that something like this is easier to do in the solid modeling environment once the part is repaired and converted, but you can do it here if you need to. The Extract Loop tool pulls the edges of a surface out into a 3D sketch. This is useful if you want to do something different with the surface, using the current one as a starting point. Finally, 
The reverse normal tool can be used if you need to swap the up and down sides of a surface. In any case, the repair process will leave the history with the surfaces and repair geometry folder in the browser. If you don't mind the clutter, it doesn't hurt anything, except that it does make the file considerably larger than it needs to be. If you want to clean the file up, the way to do it is to re-export the geometry to a neutral file format and then reopen it. I found the Parasolid X underscore B file format to be excellent for this purpose. I'll write the file out and then open it, being sure that only the solids option is checked. In this example, the file size for the repaired part with surfaces is over 3.8 megabytes. Exporting to X underscore B and reopening the part without bringing the surfaces brings the size down to less than 1.7 megabytes. That's it for the tools and procedures in the surface repair environment. In the next video, we'll look at some more advanced techniques. I hope you enjoyed this short video. I'm Walt Jakewith for Imagine Up Technologies. See you next time, and happy modeling.